Hi, welcome back to Dr. Donovan, Medicine Made Easy, and in today's video, we're going to be looking at this sign here, which is Gray Turner's sign, which is a clinical sign referring to bruising of the flanks, which is the part of the body between the last rib and the top of the hip. In terms of a retroperitoneal hemorrhage, it looks like a blue discoloration, and it's due to bleeding or retroperitoneal hemorrhage behind the peritoneum, which is the lining of the abdominal cavity. Gray Turner's sign, which you can see in this image here, usually takes 24 to 48 hours to develop so it's a late sign of retroperitoneal hemorrhage but it can be seen in conjunction with another sign which is known as Cullen sign which is bruising around the umbilicus. I've made another video on Cullen sign which is separate to this video which you can check out later in your own time by clicking on a link which should appear on screen up here. I hope you find it useful and if you do please consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't done so already because I put out loads more clinical content every Wednesday and Sunday. So what is a retroperitoneal hemorrhage? Well, it's a rare but potentially life-threatening diagnosis, and the presentation and symptoms can be subtle. But we can think of a retroperitoneal hemorrhage in three separate categories in terms of causes. The first one is spontaneous, so you'd be thinking of this in things like people who have bleeding disorders or, or coagulopathies, as well as people who take blood thinning medicines such as warfarin. You can then think of it as caused by traumatic causes, so things like car crashes where someone might hit the steering wheel. And and have something like a blunt trauma and that usually accounts for 70 to 80 percent of cases of trauma rather than significant sharp trauma and then you've got post procedural things and there are case reports of retroperitoneal hemorrhage after various procedures so for example vaginal mesh insertion or ERCP but classically it's a complication of endovascular and percutaneous procedures in terms of remembering causes or the organs that are affected in a retroperitoneal hemorrhage well you've got an mnemonic here which is SAD pucker so S-A-D-P-U-C-K-E-R. S stands for the supraadrenal or suprarenal glands so those are the adrenal glands and they're usually located just at the top of the kidneys here. A is aorta and added into that is the IVC so the inferior vena cava. D is the duodenum P stands for pancreas, so that's the head, neck, and body, which is obviously here. Then you've got the ureters, which are the tubes connecting the kidneys down to the bladder. You've also got C standing for colon, which is both the ascending and descending colon. And then K is for kidneys. E is the obviously American spelling of esophagus, so the food pipe, and then R stands for the rectum. If we move on to the next slide, we're just going to talk very briefly about some signs and symptoms that you can get. So you get something called a triad, which is known as the Lenk or Wunderlich triad. So if you think of a triangle here, you've got three common symptoms that you need to think about. The first one is pain. Now the pain that you can experience will usually be found in the back, the groin, the flank and the abdomen. It's the most common presenting symptom of a retroperitoneal hemorrhage. The next is a mass or a palpable mass in the abdomen. So make sure you do a thorough abdominal examination. And the final bit of the triad is shock. The patient will probably be in shock. And remember that Gray Turner's sign as well as Cullen's sign are late presentations or late signs and symptoms. The reason I've included this picture here is that we're going to talk very briefly about the femoral nerve and why it's important because it's a presenting sign or, or symptom and the, the reason is that pe people can get leg paresis or anterior thigh hypesthesia and that's secondary to the hematoma which builds up in the retroperitoneal region and it compresses the femoral nerve which obviously supplies the nerves to the leg so a patient might present with this leg pain or different sensation in the leg in terms of evaluation, well, you need to be doing several investigations. Obviously, you need to be doing bloods, looking for a full blood count for anemia. You can also do a urinalysis, looking for hematuria or blood in the urine. And then this is a key investigation, so a CT scan, preferably with IV contrast, to look for extravasation. And here you can see on the um, right-hand side, you've got a retroperitoneal hemorrhage that's occurring. And then that person may go on and develop this grey term a sign as we've already talked about in the video. Finally, we're just going to briefly cover management. So the key thing is that the patient will most likely need resuscitating. So things like fluid resuscitation, blood transfusion if necessary, or anticoagulant reversal. And make sure you go through this trauma workup as part of your investigations and management to make sure you stabilize the patient. You're then going to need to think about surgical or interventional radiology input, and that's because you might 
might need to consider surgical decompression of the underlying cause of the Grey Turner sign, which is the retroperitoneal hemorrhage. I hope you found the video useful. I've included useful links in the description box of the video. As ever, if you enjoyed it, please remember to give it a thumbs up, um, subscribe to the channel, and leave a comment if you've got any questions or feedback. Thanks again for watching, and until next time, bye. Thank you.